Hello, welcome to NYC Data Science Academy. I am Pranjali and today we are talking with Kurt Vaughan. Uh, he is one of the best data scientists in the industry, a renowned public speaker in the field of machine learning and a digital influencer with more than 250,000 followers on Twitter. He is the principal data scientist and an executive advisor at Booz Allen Hamilton and we will be doing a quick rapid fire with him about data science today. Okay. Welcome to NYC Data Science Academy. Fantastic, thank you Pranjali. This is I think my third visit and I oh, love wow. coming here. So, uh, tell us one important trend that everyone in data science should know. Well right now I think auto, auto ML, automated machine learning is becoming a really big thing. Uh, companies out there producing automated machine learning. And basically it's for the citizen data scientists, that is the company people who don't necessarily go to these beautiful boot, boot camps and, and, and learn all the things that we're learning here. Uh, there's still a need for that, but, there's not, but companies have such a huge demand for machine learning and data science, these automated tools are really taking over the market. Absolutely. Uh, so what do you prefer, Python or R? Do I prefer Python or R? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, uh, which data science skills are most needed for future data scientists? What do you think? Well, data science skills, uh, clearly uh, coding, uh, data understanding, data literacy, uh, these, are, these are the standard things, but, but, but on top of that, I focus a lot on the aptitude of the data scientists, being able to tell the data story, being able to explain and make an argument with data with people, uh, so that data understanding is clearly a critical skill, and uh, more and more, uh, because of the importance of AI, we need more and more labeled data, uh, tagged data, in order to uh, train those algorithms. So data scientists are going to have to play a significant role in helping to even to automate the tagging of data because there's so much data. Absolutely. I hope everyone is taking a note of that. Uh, what is your advice to people who want to change their careers to data science from any other field? Well, that's, a, that's uh, something that I feel passionate about. I think almost anyone can do that uh, because to be relevant in today's world in any kind of career, people need digital knowledge, digital literacy, and, and even data literacy. And so uh, spend some time learning what data is, learning how it impacts the world, learn how businesses are used. And so that's the first step towards this career so for people who aren't already in it. And I, and I think once people see the power of data to, to do discovery, to do prediction, to do optimization, to build business value, people will just want to do it. And, and so it, it lights a passion inside of people. Every time I talk with people about this who are outside this field, they just have a passion ignited inside them. And that, that drives them to go learn the hard stuff. Correct. That reminds me of the next question. So, what do you think is the importance of uh, data literacy? It's really a very, uh, data literacy for me is like the absolute most critical thing. To it, 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 all the way from like early childhood education all the way through adult education and lifelong learning. People should be learning how to understand data, work with data, read data, make arguments and, and with data. It's, it's, an, it's an important tool in today's world where data is the fundamental business asset that's, that's driving decision making and actions in all kinds of organizations. And so understanding what data is, is that, you know, that it's not just numbers, it's, it's images, it's text, it's social media posts, it's everything. And, and what can one do with these different things? You can, you can have a really great conversation with a recruiter about these types of things and get a job, or you can be a great data scientist and not know how to talk about these things and not get a good job. So you really do need to know how to talk about data, talk with data, and uh, make a case with data. Correct. So you are also one of the best digital influencers, the number one digital influencer of 2019. So what's your advice to data scientists who want to be out there and you know, talk about data since you mentioned about it? Well, I use uh, uh, Twitter primarily, but also on LinkedIn, and I, I use that as what I call my micro-education platform, teaching people this stuff. I just love to teach it. And so I think well, the, the power of teaching something is you learn it really well when you teach it. But also at the same time, it builds an amazing community, because there is an amazing community online, and it helps to build that community and become part of it. Correct. So people are also, we should encourage people to share more of their projects, on Kaggle, and Absolutely. They should share these things, share things they're doing, share what other people are doing because we 
again, it's a community building. Okay. And fat, last piece of advice on the social media thing is be sure you follow me on Twitter. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I mean you. What is the best uh, way to learn data science in a few months? Well, I think the obvious answer is right behind us here <laughs> is to uh, work at a boot camp, attend a boot camp, and New York Data Science Academy is one of the best. Uh, and so what you can do is get a, a very concentrated amount of material, coding, algorithms, use cases, applications, all these things in just a few months. Uh, so you can take online courses. It doesn't have the structure and, 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 uh, of the community of a boot camp. Uh, you don't have uh, those use cases that the industry partners for boot camps bring to the, to the boot camp. So I think that's one of the best ways to do it. Absolutely. And when, where do you think is the trend going? Like which industries are recruiting data scientists the most? Oh my gosh, it's everywhere now. <laughs> uh, but I always tell people the two biggest use cases in the world are cybersecurity and healthcare. Okay. Uh, because cybersecurity is like the number one top of mind thing in every organization in the world, or should be. And healthcare because that affects every single human being in the world. And so, so if, you, if you're looking for a place that you haven't already found one, uh, that's, those are two good places to start, but, but you don't have to, you don't have to leave it there. Every every business is doing this. Correct. Absolutely. And what are the three great resources for anybody who you know can who wants to learn data science or can you know approach it online? I'll go to conferences that allow you to give workshops or to give talks at conferences. Mm -hmm. And so by the, making those presentations, specifically training workshops, uh, again it helps you to learn more. This, that process of preparing this material like that. Uh, also, obviously, attending boot camps and, and, and taking courses, obviously, it is another example we've already mentioned. Uh, but uh, the third I would uh, suggest is participation in the online competitions. There's, uh, there's a lot of online machine learning data science competitions. Uh, there, uh, there's some famous platforms, mm -hmm. and there's some new platforms that are coming. Uh, there's everyone out there who uh, is interested in uh, this subject specifically as it applies to hard social problems. Uh, they're putting up these uh, uh, AI for social good type of uh, competitions, whether it's climate change or healthcare or something. Participating in those competitions is, is a lot of fun, and you learn a lot, and again, uh, you're building a community at the same time. So even if you don't place well in the competition, like I competed in one once and I didn't do very well, but I didn't care about it, I just, the experience was wonderful. Okay, so teaching at, uh, at the boot camp or, you know, teaching it, uh, taking courses and then attending uh, or participating in uh, oh, competitions. Correct. Um, so do you think data scientist, the role would be the sexiest job of 22nd century as well? Uh, 22nd century? I, I think we'll, by the 22nd century, I think uh, data science will be so blended into what we do, we don't even talk about it as a separate entity. I like, I like to tell people that 100 years ago, there was this major sort of industrial revolution of the introduction of electricity, and one of the primary uh, executives in, in businesses was the CEO, the chief electricity officer, because they were very concerned about this new thing. You know, they, they needed to manage the fear, the business transformation, they were worried, people were worrying about their jobs and the changes in jobs that were taking place because of this newfangled thing, electricity, plus they were afraid of it, they didn't know exactly what it was. Well, that sounds a lot like data and artificial intelligence today, right? Okay. And so I think 100 years from now, we might, people would probably be laughing at us for all the fears we had about data science and data, because okay. uh, it'll be so blended and part of mm -hmm. the natural life that, that we'll, we'll be doing something else. We'll, we'll be beyond even quantum computing 100 years from now, so who knows what the thing might be. <laughs> that is true. So uh, forget flying cars, we'll have flying houses. You can just fly wow. your house to wherever you want to be. Oh, that would be something nice to have. <laughs> Self-driving houses. Yes. <laughs> when um, the beach, your house will drive itself to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so that brings us to the end of the rapid fire. We had 10 quick questions and thank you Cole for answering them and sharing your thoughts and your value, valuable advice with our viewers. You're welcome, Ranjali. It was really great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us.